My name is Doug Daller, and I'm on the Bar Height, Oregon Committee. And I'm Dee Sanquist, and I'm also on the Bar Height, Oregon Committee with Doug at the Sondheim. Right. So the Bar Height, Oregon is uh, our favorite. It is. It's very fun instrument to play. Uh, playing organs is much like driving a car. They are all different. They all have the same basic setups, right. but what comes with them is much very different. And what's so great about this organ is it's a it's a major instrument. It's 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 big, and they're rare, and it's not a digital or a computer. It has computer component, but the sound is real. All those pipes are are up in the up in the pipe lofts. When the Sondheim, when the convention center was being built, they designed the theater to have space for this organ to be installed. It was been in storage for some years and being moved in there was a big project. And it I has helped and I helped work on that with John Connett who it took it took years to do it's a big project. John Connett has been very helpful and we all thank him every time we play this organ oh, yeah. because he basically put it together. That's a big project. He's a retired engineer and he liked to tinker with things. So yes. this was a good project for him. Yeah. I I start I started out uh, I played the on Sundays for about six years before it was moved and it was not in complete repair. So you had to kind of pick and choose what pipes to use. But now that it's in full repair or in full working order, it has, it's, it's a big instrument. And uh, so. And when Doug talks about being in full repair, what that means is an organist, every time we play a different instrument, we get to know that organ, what the capabilities are of it, what the different registrations or stops, because they all make different sounds. And if one is, out of tune or one is not playing, it makes a big difference. Yeah. So um, on the committee, we're on the committee, mm -hmm. so we sponsor um, concerts and education to popularize and make use of the organ in, a, in Fairfield. And we have, uh, basically now that the concerts are free, so we, have, we try to have about four concerts per year uh, with various guest organists um, come to play different things. And we also have a silent movie. Usually once a year we have a silent movie which, with live accompaniment because that's the way they used to do it. Mm -hmm. There would be live music. Um, and so we have, there are specialists who do just that. And those movies are actually really good, better movies than I thought. But the sound is really rich it's big it's an incredible sound if you want to get the best sound when you go hear the organ being played sit about two-thirds of the way to the top in the middle right the every organ there's no such thing as model numbers every organ is custom built and one of a kind um, as we put the organ in the Sondheim theater the the organ lofts are big up there on the sides so you want to sit a little bit back from the, up front you can see maybe what's going on, but nothing, not much is going on, just somebody <laughs> sitting there and you see their feet moving and their hands moving a little bit, but a little bit back. The sound just envelops you and it's, it's, it's really rich. I'm a particular fan of real instruments. Hearing a real symphony or a real piano or a real organ is different than digital and speakers and stereo. So. It's a rich experience to, to sit live. It is, and, and the organ has been called the king of instruments, and there's a reason for that, because it has all these variable sounds that together make up an incredible sound. Yeah, and people, you might associate the organ with either church music or ancient music, or, you know, Baroque and and uh, classical music, but there's a wide variety of music. Also, I have to remind, we play it once a year mm -hmm. for Christmas. We do a free sing-along, and Dee plays the pipe organ, 
for all of the church songs, all the hymns and all of the Christmas carols. And then I play the piano, the Steinway piano that we have, which is also a fabulous instrument at the Sondheim. I'll play that for the secular songs. So we go from the sublime to the ridiculous and back and forth and back and forth. And we put the lyrics up on the screen so everybody can just sing along. But the organ is, it's just really cool. And we're very grateful to the Arts and Convention Center for letting us do the Christmas sing-along because, and the holiday sing-along, because it's fun. You know, people like to sing carols and it gives everybody an opportunity. One of the things about the organ committee is it's a wide variety of people who are interested in music for the most part. Yes. And we're very lucky to have many of those people in this community. Right. We have a new new member who just came, moved to Fairfield, who's a well-respected, well-known organist and choir director and choral musician. And so we're looking forward to his help and maybe some a concert or two. Another thing, one of the some of the concerts we've that have been really nice are where there's a the organ combined with another instrument, mm -hmm. an instrumentalist, which is makes it really interesting. We've had with an oboist, and I've done some with the Gary Roth, with the Gary clarinet, and the clarinet, and yeah. also with percussion. We had one, but it's a very versatile instrument. It's really you're right. It's like driving. A, it's not like driving a car. It's like driving a great big rig. <laughs> You know, yeah. there's multiple keyboards so that you can have different sounds at the mm -hmm. same time or switching. And then there's all kinds of buttons and things to switch the sounds. And every sound has a whole set of pipes. Every, every note has a different, there's a different pipe for every key, for every sound. So if there's, and so in, this organ has, tw I think, 28 ranks. That means there's 28 full sets of pipes that go all the way up in this. So there's like at least 60 pipes times 28 ranks. And some of the, some of the ranks have multiple pipes for each note. So it's, it's a huge amount of pipes. It's just crazy. And a little bit of history. It was um, put in the Bar Height Chapel, I believe, in 1966. I remember playing it once for a wedding of a friend. Yeah. And you know, it's always a fun experience. Um, About a new organ? Yeah, on a different yeah. organ. At that time, I, I don't think there were that many pipe organs in Fairfield. Every church had an organ, but many were electronic. There were probably two, three, or four of them in town that were pipe. Yeah, well, and you're the organist at the First Lutheran mm -hmm. Church and play that regularly and uh, keeps you in practice. It does, yeah. most of the time. One of the things I just learned, it's also a recruiting tool to get people to move to the community. As I was talking with Werner before this taping, he uh, mentioned that the organ is what brought him to Fairfield. Really? And so we will let him tell his story at a different time. Yes, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's rare for there to be a, a major pipe organ in a civic venue. I think there's just a few around the country. They're commonly in churches which has a great use, but this is more public. So we can do a lot more variety of music, um, Bach and all of the sacred music, but a, lot, a, a wide variety. It's pretty cool. And we try to do a variety of music with whoever we bring in as a program. Yes, yes. And the, the people coming, it's it when the people, when we bring in an organist, they have to come down and spend time with the mm -hmm. instrument because every instrument is different, like you're saying. And so they'll get used to the variety of sounds and whatever. Jan Craybill came. Some of the, she's well known in, from St. Louis. And uh, the variety of textures and sounds, besides variety of music, is what's so interesting. Um, I get, I really like that. And there's no right or wrong when you set those sounds. It's a combination of what it sounds like, how the instrument is playing that day. The humidity oh, really? can affect the temp the instrument. Interesting. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, a real instrument like that, the weather, sometimes if the air is real heavy, it's it's really it's just different. The delay in the sound. 
is yeah, affected. Yeah, there, there is a delay because the, the pipes are a long ways away from mm -hmm. where the, the, the manual, the keyboard, where the console is. So you play, so it's not an instant response. So, and the other, another, I know, learned it, if you want to get louder and softer, you change the sound. You don't just, there's no, vo there is a little bit of volume control, which is a, a set of louvered vents that open and close over mm -hmm. some of the pipes. But many of the pipes are just at a constant volume. So if you want to, you change the sound, you change the volume by the selection of, it's, just, it's like choosing different parts of the orchestra. So different. And a lot of the pipes are meant to imitate flutes or oboes or trumpets but very pretty unique sounds. And then there's um, different couplers that will put, add levels of sounds to a sound. So oh, yeah. that's why it takes an organist when they come to play a concert a, a fair amount of time to set up the organ to go with the music that they've chosen. Yeah. And besides it, both hands doing maybe two different things, but also mm -hmm. the feet. So that's different than the piano and playing Playing, there's, it's just like the same keyboard, but if for the feet, that's doing three things at once is pretty far out. Um, yeah, doing three things at once makes it pretty fun. And I always encourage, if there's anyone out there that wants to learn to play the organ, please do. It's a fun instrument to play. And probably yeah. because it is using your hands and your feet. And there are exercises for hands on yeah. keyboards, oh, yeah. and there are also feet exercises on the organ that you learn, you know, once you practice these, it's like everything else we do, you have to take some time and practice a skill, then yeah. it becomes second nature. It does, you're thinking, it, it, sound, it, it is a lot of times like doing three things at once, but after playing for a while, they're not three things, they're three mm -hmm. parts of the same thing, you're playing the music and you're not really thinking about three different things, although you have to sometimes practice one part and another part and put the two parts together, but they become one thing. So it's not as mysterious after you, after you get used to it. Um, the sounds, each set of pipes has, a, has a, a button, a button or a lever or something, and you pull out that lever to turn on that set of pipes. Those are mm -hmm. called stops, I guess, because when you push in, it stops that pipe. But that's where the phrase, pulling all the stops out, if when you pull all the stops out, you get the absolute maximum volume. That's, that's just too powerful. It's so powerful, and so we, pulling all the stops when out. When you say pulling all the stops out, any time an organist goes to a different organ they've never played, that's one of the things they generally do because they want to see what that organ will do it's again it's, just like driving a car you want to see how powerful it is you want yeah. to see how powerful the organ is it's it's powerful it's it's really powerful and it's we're true. very grateful for all the donations that were given to help rebuild this organ for john Connett, who spent a lot of time building it the organ committee who continues to either fundraise or plan programs or maintain yes yeah so we both want to popularize and make use of the organ, but also fundraise and keep it. There's an endowment and repair and perform, for repair, maintenance of the organ and uh, performance. So paying for performers. The maintenance is, they're like an old, they're like a car, mm -hmm. like an antique car. You've got to constantly maintain it, and, mm -hmm. you know, keep the oil changed and brake pads or whatever. Well, there, there's a, always a little bit of maintenance that is, it's interesting. Keeps John busy. Busy. Have you ever climbed up in the? I haven't the climbed up, but I hear that you've helped John some. Oh, I've been up there. We, we, you climb way up into the <laughs> rafters, or what do they call it over the stage, that the catwalks and whatever, and then they climb around and, and then all those pipes are there. When the when the organ was installed, every organ is built custom for the location. Well, this was moved to location. One of the um, customizations to make it fit the, the Sondheim was that the, the biggest pipes needed to be changed to some different bigger pipes. And they were 12 pipes that we had to winch up and bring up. And now it's in full working order 
and I encourage you to come to the next free concerts, all the free concerts and the movie. And go movies. to the Fairfield Arts and Convention Center website. They'll have the schedule there. There's a couple coming up this spring. And they're free, so come and enjoy. We'll see you there. That's right. Thank you. Thank you.